Welcome to another milling training video from DAPRA, your provider of high quality, 100% American made milling tools. There are many different grades of carbide available in today's cutting tool market, and using the wrong grade in your milling tool can cause poor tool life or even tool breakage, resulting in frustration, delay, and loss of profits. In this session, we'll discuss the differences in carbide grades and how to choose the correct grade for your application. When you refer to your cutting tool catalog for help in setting up your milling application, you're generally given these pieces of information. Your carbide grade descriptions, your geometry descriptions, recommended cutting speeds, which will be in surface feet per minute, and recommended feed rates in feed per tooth. Each of these is very important and necessary to create a good milling program. Your carbide grade description section may look something like this, with proprietary names assigned to each individual grade. Each grade should also be shown with descriptions of its application range, either through ISO designations or through application descriptions, hopefully both. Your speed and feed recommendations will often come in the form of a chart like this, showing various material groups and the available carbide grades for each material group, as well as the recommended speed and feed ranges for each grade within that material group. If you're not used to using this data, it can look a little intimidating, but through our next three videos, we'll break this down into categories of carbide grades, cutting edge geometry, and speeds and feeds. By the time we've worked through each category, you'll have a good basic understanding of how to make all of this information work for you. Today's video will focus on carbide grades and how to choose the right one for your material and application type. We'll cover the different type of cutting geometries in our next video, then wrap it all up in the final video about speeds and feeds. First, a brief description of what we mean when we say that carbide comes in different grades. Carbide is basically a hard powder that is glued together using cobalt, a softer binder. When the powder and binder are heated up, the binder softens to a liquid state and becomes the glue for the carbide powder to stick together. Now we can create different characteristics in the combination of carbide and cobalt by changing the ratio of one to the other or by changing the size of the carbide grains themselves. Less cobalt binder and more carbide makes a harder grade, so conversely, more cobalt and less carbide makes a softer or tougher grade. Using a smaller grain size generally creates a harder, more dense grade of carbide, and using a larger grain size generally makes a tougher, less dense grade. Here's a rough illustration of what the mixture looks like. The WC is the tungsten carbide powder, and the CO is the cobalt binder. Pictures of various grades of carbide, showing some of the variety that exists in grain sizes. The grades in the medium to fine range are commonly used for roughing in carbide milling inserts. The grades in the fine through nano range are very commonly used in the manufacture of solid carbide end mills, but are also suitable for finishing work and cuts in non-ferrous materials when used in milling inserts. You don't need to know this to choose the correct grade for your application. This is just interesting information that's meant to help you understand how carbide can be harder or tougher. Here's some information that you really need to know. We suggest you freeze the video playback at the end of this slide and print the slide to paper. Tougher grades of carbide have these characteristics. They are more shock resistant, that's the toughness, which makes them somewhat less wear resistant and less re heat resistant than a harder grade. A softer, tougher grade can generally take a heavier chip load or feed per tooth than a harder grade will be able to do. Tougher grades are generally used for machining softer materials below 45 Rockwell. Now on the flip side, harder grades of carbide will offer better wear resistance and heat resistance, but they'll be less shock resistant. This means they're more brittle and won't generally take the same abuse, including chip loads and chatter, that a tougher grade will absorb. Harder grades of carbide are generally used for finishing work and for machining of harder materials above 45 Rockwell. 
Notice the ISO numbers indicated by each type of grade. When you refer to grade descriptions in your cutting tool catalog, be sure to note the ISO number. This number represents the hardness range of your carbide. A higher number in the 35 to 40 range, for example, represents a tougher grade of carbide. A lower number, perhaps in the 10 to 15 range, represents a harder grade of carbide. If the catalog doesn't come right out and tell you which is tougher or harder, the numbers will tell you that indirectly. Now that you know the primary characteristics of both hard and tough carbide grades, you're ready to take a look at your cutting tool manufacturer's grade offerings and decide which may be best suited to your application. Now keep in mind, you're not always going to choose perfectly on your first attempt. Different applications pose unique challenges to cutting tools and some trial and error, especially on a new application, should be expected. Save yourself some frustration by getting your cutting tool applications specialist involved ahead of time and use their experience and knowledge of their product to help you make the most informed choice possible. DAPRA's typical grade description chart does show the toughness versus hardness descriptions over to the far left of the grades, then describes both the uncoated substrate as well as the coated version descriptions. If your supplier's grade descriptions don't describe an insert's hardness, remember you can look at the ISO numbers shown on the right of DAPRA's chart here and know that the highest numbers represent tougher grades while the lower numbers represent the harder grades. Now the P, M, K, and H designations shown on the ISO numbers represent different material groups, which we'll touch on just a bit later. Notice on this speed and feed chart that the different grades of available carbide are also shown in increasing degrees of hardness from top to bottom. This is helpful in determining what speed and feed range is suitable for the material being machined, and also in this case for knowing a good typical first choice grade for a material. The best typical first choice of carbide grade for a material to be machined is shown in bold text for the speed numbers. While other available grades also provide speed figures, they're not in bold text. This helps take some of the guesswork out of the grade selection. The first choice isn't always the best one, but it's a good bet that you'll be close. Want to know in a nutshell how to start your application in the safest way possible, minimizing your cutting tool failures and breakages? Here's the formula. Start with the toughest carbide grade recommended for your material. Take the speed range recommended for that grade and set your program up for about the middle of that range or maybe just below that. Then take a number from the low end of the feed range and apply that. On top of all that, start at a lighter depth of cut than what you're hoping to be able to achieve. All of these beginning points allow you to ease into a new application, creating a pretty safe starting point in which you're much more likely to encounter early wear than you are to break or melt down your cutting tool. Once you have a measure of performance at these starting numbers, you can always get more or less aggressive with your machining parameters or try other grades of carbide. Again, Involving your cutting tool application specialist is your best and shortest route to success, providing they know their product well. There are six primary material groups for machining. Standard or non-heat treated steel, hardened steel, stainless steel, cast iron, exotics, and non-ferrous materials. Let's take a quick look at each of them and the general guidelines for choosing your carbide grades for each material. Steels that have not been heat treated, or ISO series P, a good medium hardness carbide grade will work very well due to its combination of wear resistance and good toughness. Now the exception would be if the application is unstable due to a long cutting tool, poor fixturing, or some other reason. If you expect or are encountering chatter or vibration, Choosing a tougher grade of carbide for protection against chipping or breakage is the way to go. Remember, softer steels can be machined with a softer or tougher grade of carbide. The high strength of an ISO series H heat treated steel requires a harder grade of carbide to stand up to the increased heat and cutting forces present when hard milling. Using a harder carbide grade in the P or K range 
combined with more conservative machining parameters, is the formula for success in machining your hardened steels. Your cutting edge choice is critical here as well, but we'll touch on that in our next video. ISO Series M stainless steels are challenging in that they like to stick to your cutting edge and because they generate significant heat during the cut. Add to this the tendency to work harden and you've got yourself a really fun material to machine. DAPER recommends using tougher grades of carbide in the M or K range for most stainless steel roughing applications. For lighter finishing style cuts, a harder grade of carbide in the K range can be successful provided the cutting edge chipping doesn't become a problem. Regular gray and malleable cast irons are pretty easy to cut, but abrasive. Using a hard carbide grade in the K range will provide the best wear resistance. When machining the longer chipping nodular irons or stronger iron groups, a good medium hardness grade in the K or P range may be required. Given the silicon carbide content of cast irons, the hardest grade of carbide that you can successfully machine with will be desirable to combat that abrasive wear and will also allow the highest speeds. Exotics are materials that involve the highest levels of heat during machining, as well as a strong tendency to built up edge or cold welding of the material to the cutting edge. These materials in the ISO S series generally respond best to a tough K range carbide grade. Coolant will virtually always be necessary here, as well as a high temperature coating. If doing a light finishing style cut, a harder carbide grade still in the K range may be usable. Finally, we finish with the ISO series N or non-ferrous materials. Materials in this group are the easiest to machine and allow the use of the hardest carbide grades in the K range for maximum tool life. You'll generally be running extremely fast here and using large amounts of flood coolant to prevent material sticking to your cutting edge. For the ultimate in wear and heat resistance in these materials, especially in composites, use PCD or polycrystalline diamond, which is brazed into the surface of the carbide. This is by far the hardest but most brittle cutting material choice. It's very expensive to purchase but can yield tool life up to 50 times that of uncoated carbide or even more, making it a good value in the right application. We hope you found this video on choosing the correct carbide grade helpful. Feel free to contact us or comment with any questions. DAPER is proud to support American manufacturing by being 100% American made. Check back with us soon for our next video choosing the right cutting geometry for your application.